Okay. Hello, Laura. Let me get everybody brought up. Um, we're doing something a little different today. We're doing a live on Facebook and a live on Instagram at the same time. It's the first time ever I've ever done that. So if you're joining us, say hello. Let me turn up the volume here. It doesn't work on my phone. It doesn't work. Well, I can't tell. You guys, we have a little technical difficulty here, so hold on. Can you guys hear me? Give me some thumbs up if you can hear me. Hi, Mary. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Let me see if I can hear me on my phone or my iPad. No, there's nothing. Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, it's working. Say hello if you can hear me. Hi, Mary. Hello, hello. I need to know if the sound's working. Do you have your sound turned up? Yeah. It's working. Okay, see, it's working. Yay! Okay. So, I've got... Okay, you can turn it down now. We've got a lot of going, a lot of, hi Pamela. We got a lot of things happening here all at the same time. Turn your volume down. Uh, hello, thank you Pamela. We're going live on uh, Instagram and on Facebook at the same time and I've never done that before so we'll see how things go today. Um, I'll start off by introducing myself. I'm Deborah Booker with Deborah Booker Designs, and I'm located in Phoenix, Arizona. I have a shop at the Brass Armadillo, and I also have an online store, and all of that information, address, and link to the online store is up above at the top. And um, so that's what we've got going on today. I'm going to be working on this table that I showed you guys last week and it just needed so much work on it and it needed a lot of uh, stripping and sanding and it was quite the project. So what I've done on this table so far is I have Put, I've stripped it three times. I've cleaned it with mineral spirits and I cleaned it really well with white lightning. And then I put two coats of um, uh, boss on it in white. Boss comes in white and it comes in clear and it comes in gray. And I used the white because I painted this table with a uh, drop cloth. And we have two coats of drop cloth. If you guys are just signing on, say hello and tell me where you're from. 
So this is ready to have a stencil put on it. And I'm excited to be putting this Harlequin stencil on here. And to be quite honest, I've never put one on where there are grooves in the table. See how this is kind of scalloped around here? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press it down since it's adhesive and try to get it on there the best that I can. Hi, Jody. You guys say hello and tell me where you're from. Okay, so to start off, this is 11 and a half by 11 and a half. Hi, Rosetta from Wayne, New Jersey. Thanks for joining us. So this is 11 and a half by 11 and a half, and that fits my table just about perfect. So I'm gonna turn the camera down so that you can see. I'm gonna turn the camera down. Okay, I think that's a good angle. Okay. On an adhesive stencil, and this, this exact same stencil is on my website if you want to do a design like this. I did the same design on the sides of a, a baby's cabinet, um, like a bookcase for a baby's room. And because I needed a much longer length, I just measured how many of these I needed to have, and then I just butted them up together. So, um, and you can do the same thing if your width is wider. So just so you guys know, and this is 11 and a half by 11 and a half. On the back side of it is where, it, this is your, the front side is your transfer paper. The back side is like contact paper. And so what you want to do is just carefully pull that contact paper off. You don't want to just rip it off. You don't want to take it off gently. Okay. So the side that's left here is all uh, sticky. That's the adhesive that holds the stencil down. And I know the stencil's slightly bigger than my table because I have all of those scallops on it. So I want to determine exactly. that this is what I want to determine is where the center is here before I lay it down. And that looks pretty good right there. So I've got a point here and a point here and a point here and a point here. So I'm going to really rub this down really, really well. And I'm just burnishing it in. So this is like sticking the stencil to my piece. And so this is a good example because I've done lots of these adhesive stamp stencils online for you guys. Um, but this one is not straightforward. So it kind of teaches you how to plan and think outside the box because we've got all of the scallop around the edge here. And the advantage to doing adhesive stencils is it really cuts back on the probability of having any uh, bleed through or leakage underneath your stencil. So I really wanna get it down well around those edges.
guys have any questions, pop on. If you're new, say hello and introduce yourself. So I just want to be sure that this is really on here well. And then I'm going to peel back one of these corners and I'm going to remove the actual transfer paper that's on the top. And when you guys order these from me, you do get instructions and there's lots of videos on my page that you can go back and review. Because the first time you use one, it could be confusing. Rosetta wants to know if that's rice paper. No, Rosetta, this is a vinyl adhesive stencil. It's not decoupage and it's not rice paper. It's actually a stencil. And when you remove the top layer, which is the transfer paper, you want to do it at a 45 degree angle. You do not want to pull up on it. Okay, so I'm just taking my time here, and the only place that's going to be tricky is around these edges. So again, I'm taking this off at a 45 degree angle, burnishing it down as I go along. Hi, Patty. Thanks for joining us. We're doing a Harlequin pattern on top of this cute little table that has caused me so much work. This was going to be the project last week, and um, this table just ended up being so much work. I couldn't, couldn't get it for a live last week, and I have spent a lot of time working on it to get it for a live this week. But you can already see, this isn't painted on yet, but you can already see how cute that's going to be. And you could do that using one of your flexible rulers. Do you have a flexible ruler over here? You could do the same thing. If you didn't want to use a stencil, you could do your flexible ruler on here and draw your triangles. And I've done that many times, but I'm telling you, stencil is the way to go. And I like these. I mean, you can get, and I will have um, the Dixie Bell Harlequin stencils in stock. My order comes in on um, Friday. And those are not adhesive stencils. Those are mylar stencils and they're reusable however you have to, you have more um leakage issues when you're using a vinyl stencil but that's not to say you can't use them because you can use the adhesive spray to stick them down to help with that but then you got to clean that spray off and so this is in my opinion this is the best way to go. And usually it's easier to get them, get your pattern off, but I'm having to be really careful with these scallops around the edges. And I have a trick I'm gonna show you guys to also help prevent leakage. So we got a lot going on today. Patty, I did make this um, adhesive, and it's available on my website. Uh, it measures 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So if you need a larger one, you can always order more than one and just butt it together, because I've done that on um, a child's bookcase and it came out really good. In fact, it's over at the Brass Armadillo. Um, and if you don't need this much, if you need, like if you're doing a book cover or something, 
just cut it to fit your book, but then you still have some left over for another project. We're almost there, you guys. Hang on. This isn't hard to do. It's just those scallops on this table make it a little more challenging. But I want you to see how you can think outside the box and figure out how to make things work for whatever your project is. Some things, sometimes things are really straightforward and sometimes you gotta figure out a way to make something work. Okay, so I just wanna get these edges burnished down really well. If you guys like this, give me thumbs up. I think it's gonna be really, really cute. I've been really excited to work on this table and it's just been a pain in the neck this table has been. It has not been cooperative at all. I had to sand it, strip it, took three coats of stripping. There were three different coats of paint on this table. One was a latex and came off like rubber. One was like a chalk paint, so it just, not a chalk paint, a milk paint, and it literally just dissolved on here. Um, and then there was the factory finish, and this is this was a really nice table. It's really sturdy, sturdy, and on the bottom it's stamped "Made in Italy." So, okay, I think I think we've got it down. Now, one of the tricks that I want to share with you guys is if you are worried about and this works also if you're taping if you're using tape to make you could use um, the painters tape to do this um, anytime you're using any kind of a stencil the vinyl ones or the mylar ones it doesn't matter um, remember to do this trick so i am going to put this in my fifo bottle i have satin in here satin top coat and I'm going to put a coat of satin top coat on here first just one thin coat and what I'm doing by doing this is I am sealing putting a barrier I'm sealing the stencil with the top coat and so when I go to put the black on for my design it's not going to leak underneath here and since the top coat is transparent it's not gonna hurt anything does anybody have any questions about this You guys are a quiet bunch. Okay, along the middle here, I don't have to be so particular, but around these edges, I really want to be particular. And it may be when I pull this off, I may have to touch up those edges. You know, this is something I haven't, I haven't put a stencil on a scalloped edge like that. So I don't know how it's going to react. We're gonna all find out together. Can you use a seal on all stencils? 
Um, a top coat, yes. You just need to, if you're using a reusable Mylar stencil. That was Rosetta. Okay, if you're using a reusable Mylar, you just have to clean it really well when you're finished so that you can reuse it. Okay, so that didn't take much. I'm going to grab my dryer here. This shut itself off after a few minutes, so it's no longer. No, it's on here. No, this is Instagram. Are you on Instagram? No, that's my iPad. That's my iPad right here. Okay. I'm just going to give this a quick little dry. Okay, so I can see just by looking at this, you guys, that this corner over here isn't down and this corner isn't. So I'm just going to try with my X-Acto knife, if, see if I can cut that and make it lay down. And you guys can use whatever top coat you have in your paint stash. It doesn't have to be satin top coat. It can be any kind. It can be gator hide. It can be flat. It can be glossy. Just use what you have because the result is the same. So I'm just cutting around where the scallop is. It's cutting really well with the X-Acto knife. And then just pressing that down. If this was perfectly square, there wouldn't be any issue. But then it wouldn't be any fun if it was perfectly square. Sometimes it's just learning how to figure out an alternate way to get the result that you want. Like I said, the only place it's going to be an issue is around these edges. And I may end up having to go in and touch up. But that's still going to be a better alternative than having to have drawn all this out or taped it all off. I did a big drop leaf table with a Harlequin on it about a year and a half ago. And it's one of the favorite things I've ever done. I love that table so much, but um, that sure is a lot of work to do it that way. But it's also very satisfying. But once I learned to do it this way, I just can't make myself do it all manually again. So, just so you guys know, this table was stripped three times, and then it was sanded, 
stripped, sanded some more, and then I used uh, mineral spirits on it to clean all of that stripper off. And then I used white lightning to get all of the rest of the residue off and then rinsed it really well with fresh clean water. And um, the picture that I posted for today's event is what it looked like today when all of that was done. And um, And then it has two coats of white boss on it because when I was rinsing it, when I was doing all of that process, but also when I was rinsing it with, after cleaning it with the white lightning, it seemed to me to be like there was some color coming off into my water. And that usually is a sign that you've got a bleeder and I don't know what kind of wood. There's two kinds of wood on here. There's a wood on the top of this and there's a different wood on the legs. And after all I've gone through with this table, if it was a bleeder, I didn't want to paint it and have it bleed. If that happened to me at this point, I'd probably chop it up and pour it, throw it into the fire pit. So um, I didn't want that to happen. So I did take the precaution and use the boss and boss is two things it stops it's a primer it stops bleed through and it also is an odor blocker so if you buy a piece of furniture from a yard sale or something and it's been in somebody's attic or it's been in somebody's basement or it's been in uh, a home that's a smoking home and it has a funky odor to it, then you use Boss as an odor blocker. It's a great product. And all of these products are no VOCs. So they're safe to use in a baby's room, on baby's furniture, high chairs. Somebody was asking about that today. Okay, so I have cut around this edge all the way around and I'm burnishing it again, just making sure that everything is down as well as we can make it. And truly, I do expect to have to touch up around these edges. I just don't think there's gonna be any getting around it. Okay. So the next thing I'm so excited is we're going to paint caviar on here. And so the colors I've used on here are drop cloth and I'm putting caviar on. And you guys, when I'm doing stencils, I just use um, artist brushes. It doesn't matter what artist brushes you have on hand. Um, any artist brush will do. And so I'm just gonna paint out of the lid here and it's dry. I am not wetting my brush. And we all know when we're using Dixie Bell paint, you're always told to wet wet your brush and to use a wet brush, but when you're stenciling, you never ever, I don't care what kind of stencil you're using, you never want to wet your brush. Uh, Joey Russ says, I saw a neat desktop posting for sale, uh, but the, uh, on the show, Well, if it was neat and it smelled like chickens, just boss it. And the, the boss comes in clear too. So think about this. If you have a piece that you want to use boss on, think about what your finish is going to be. 
because it comes in clear, it comes in um, white, and it also comes in gray. So if you are bossing something that has red tones, that you want to paint red tones on, then use the gray because it will take the paint better with fewer coats. Uh, I didn't use the clear today because I want this table, I wanted it done in the drop cloth and that's, you know, closer to a white, so I used the boss that was um, the white boss. So it took less effort for me to, um, took less effort for me to uh, get coverage on this table. And I usually, when I'm doing this, you can see I offload in the center of the Harlequin, and then I go, I paint this way going in. I'm not going against the edge of that Harlequin um, because I don't want to push paint underneath that edge. that make sense you guys my comment reader just stepped out hi Stacy thanks for joining us I'm painting a Harlequin design on this cute little table that has been so much work. Um, lessons learned for me with this table is that I hate stripping. And I've only had to strip a piece of furniture in my lifetime. This is the third time and hopefully the last time that I've learned my lesson. And one of the beautiful things about Dixie Bell chalk paint is that you're most of the time the only prep you have to do is scuff sand it and clean it really well with white lightning and rinse it and you're good to go. Um, some projects you don't even have to scuff sand and so you get instant gratification by being able to paint right away. This table, there was no instant gratification. It was a headache from the get-go. And the funny part about that was I was looking for a super easy piece last week because I was just crazy busy and hadn't had a lot of time to prep. And so I, uh, was in the spare bedroom and I looked over in the corner and this table was tucked away and I've had this table for over 20 years and I thought oh this will be simple and super cute with this Harlequin and then when I started cleaning it and there's all kinds of detail on here and like I said there were three coats of different paints on it and whoever painted coat number two and coat number three on here, a latex paint and then a milk paint on it. They did such a sloppy job and all the detail just had huge buildups of paint in the detail that you couldn't even tell what the detail was on here. So I had to clean all, I just decided, oh, I'll just strip it. I've got stripper. I used it on the mirror piece that I did a couple of weeks ago and that stripper was awesome for that mirror and I thought no big deal I can get this done before my life nope I've been working on this silly table for a week now so my lesson learned is if a piece looks like it's gonna have to be stripped I'm passing it up that's my lesson learned 
I'm going to turn this light on over here. I'm working on black on black and it's getting hard to see. Hi Lois, thanks for watching. So you guys, you have any questions? What projects are you guys all working on this week? You're a quiet group. Please tell me somebody's working on a project this week. fun part is going to be when I get this all on here and I pull it off. Oh, Rosetta, you're doing doggy portraits? How cool. I would love to see that. That's amazing artistry, honestly. Anybody else? Pam Davis, are you working on anything? Joey, I know you're getting ready to work on some stuff. Joey, I'm gonna try. My delivery comes in on Friday and my son-in-law is coming up the mountain on Friday and I'm gonna to try to get it over to him before he comes up to bring up to you. Stacy, you're making fall decorating with toolboxes. Oh, I would love to see that. You guys, go on my Facebook page and, paint, and post what you're working on. Lois, you're working on a little table that you thought was going to be a slam dunk. Oh, well, welcome to my world. Isn't that funny? Okay, I don't have to be so careful going through the center, but again, be sure that you are going, that you're not going the direction of your, you don't wanna lift up your stencil. You wanna go away from it so you don't push any paint underneath it. And I am going to go around with a second coat And I don't know if we'll have time for it today, but I also have skinny stencils that I did like this to go down the center of each leg. I thought that would be really cool. And then I may go back with some gold gilding wax because I did clean out all of those cute little details that are on here. 
And this is just a perfect little table if you've got somebody visiting and you're having a glass of wine or sharing a cup of coffee and they just need a little table set next to them to set their glass down. This is just perfect for that and it will be stinking cute. And I don't know if it's really that easy anymore to find these little tables. Are you guys seeing very many of them? I think that pour painting, Pam, is super fun and I think it's super cool you do that with your grandkids. Those are really good projects. I'd like to do more of those pours myself. You guys, just so you know, I'm on here every single Tuesday and every single Wednesday at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And Wednesdays are craft projects. Tuesdays are always furniture projects. And if you haven't already liked my page, I would love it if you would go on and like my Facebook page. I do put an event notification up every week. And that, if you like those when you see them, then it will give you a notification when I've gone live. And my shop is at the Brass Armadillo in Phoenix. And they are open seven days a week, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So very convenient shopping. I think they're only closed two or three days out of the year. I think it's Christmas, New Year's, and Thanksgiving. And I'm always here if you have questions. You can always feel free to message me if you have questions about products or what products to use. That's what I'm here for, you guys. I'm going to give it a quick little dry. for putting the link there. Rosetta, my Facebook page is Deborah Cooper Design and the link is up at the top of this video. going to do a quick coat around one more time and like I said I perfectly expect to have to do some touch up around this whole border I'm trying to be really careful but we'll see you know what they say it's only paint you can always paint over it It sounds like you guys have some really cool projects going on. And like I said, I really love it when people who follow me post pictures of the pro projects that they're working on because that just gives ideas and inspiration to all of us. And we really are a community. And it's nice to have other people uh, appreciate the work that you're doing. So 
So you guys, share away. Now remember, before I started putting the black on, I sealed this with um, a top coat to help prevent leakage going underneath. So all of the center parts, I'm confident, are going to be nice and clean. It's going to be the edges that might have an issue. So that's just a trick to put in your playbook. Are there any future projects that you guys want to learn about? Are there any paints that you want to have more information on? Like the silk paints or the patina paints or... or other design tricks. I doubt we'll have time for me to put the Harlequin on the legs, but I'll do a short, when I get ready to do it, I'll do a short little video and post it on my page so you can see. And of course, I'll post a page when this is all finished. But just think about how cute and fast this is on any tabletop or the sides of a bookcase. And I will have on my delivery that comes in on Friday, I do have some of the Mylar stencils from Dixie Bell in that delivery. And they're not up on my webpage yet, but they will be. And then these, this adhesive vinyl is up on my webpage. And you know you could, um, if you wanted this to have a distressed look to it, you could just use a 120 sanding sponge and go over it and over the black and kind of distress it out a little bit. It would look pretty too. And of course, when I'm finished with this, when it's all done, I'm going to... Um, be top coating it in gator hide so that it has a water repellent finish to it. I'm going to get some water here. Okay, I'm gonna give it a quick dry, and I don't like to dry it all the way. I like the paint to still be a little bit damp. Okay, 
So you guys, we're doing this together. This is an experiment. Cross your fingers. I'm gonna start with pulling off the border where I took the X-Acto knife and cut it. I'm gonna start there and pull that all off. That worked out good. Okay, and then these edges will probably come off in pieces. That came off good. Now, I have a picker tool, but you can get pickers at um, Harbor Freight. You can um, use a toothpick. I've done that when I did, couldn't find my pickers. Just anything that has a hook on it. And like I said, I like to do it while the paint is still a little bit on the damp side. And you want to pull straight up so that you don't smear any if you still have wet paint when you're pulling off. Look how pretty those Harlequins are. And there's a little touch up right there and a little touch up up here, but oh my gosh, this really turned out honestly better than I had hoped. This little table owes me a break. Yes, Stacy, I make these these stencils. Um, you know, crickets are hard to learn, and I I did this on a cricket. They are hard to learn, and I can't tell you how many hours of YouTube videos I have watched, but there's a gal, and her name is, um, give me a second, Rita Freca. It's R-E-T-A-F-R-E-C-O-T, -E I believe, and I can put her link in. She teaches, she has a membership group, and she teaches how, how to make stencils on your Cricut. And they do all kinds of really cool projects. I've been a member of that group for a couple of years and I'm still learning stuff that like, oh, well that was cool. And then Cricut just updated um, with new machines and so the machines do new things. And so that's just a good way to learn and have help handy when you're trying to do a project and you get stuck. I'll put her link in here for you. If you guys are loving this, give me some hearts. I've worked hard on this table. So it has this pretty scalloped edge on it going around. Sometimes you have to let furniture talk to you and guide you on what you should do with it. And I haven't completely settled what, 
how I want to go beyond getting these harlequins painted on the top and the legs and maybe using some gilding wax on it. So what ideas do you guys have? If this was your little table, what would you do? Would you paint these scallops? And if you would, what color would you paint them? Now putting that satin top coat on here really did a good job. So you guys remember to do that if you've got a stencil that you are concerned may leak through. Ta-da! So you can see around the edges here, I have a few places to touch up, but that won't be difficult. And I'm going to turn this. Ta-da! I think that's super cute, you guys. Cute table. So I'm going to turn it this way. I don't think we have time, but I'm just going to sh quickly show you what I have in mind. So like I said, I have this strip and my plan is to take this Harlequin stencil and start right up here at the top right here, not up here where the, the scallop, go, the, I don't know, bib maybe is a good name. But my plan is to take this and run it all the way down to the bottom. And I may, it, it comes off to the edge here. Can you guys see what I'm talking about right here where my finger is? Um, yeah, moonshine gold would be really pretty on it. Um, what if you want to do this on glass? Do you coat it first or not? And do you top coat it? So if you're going to do it on glass, like last week's craft project was painting milk bottles like this. So let me set those back up. Your sister says, I love the dog in the background. Oh. <laughs> okay, so last week's craft project was painting glass. And so I did these milk bottles. And on this particular one, it has a trans, this is a transfer, and this is a stamp. Um, it's a little B stamp like this. I have these for sale on my website, and I have the uh, vintage transfer. And you guys, it's last Wednesday, Wednesday's um, video. But to paint on glass on any slick or shiny surface, you need to use Slick Stick, and that's this product. And Slick Stick is if it's slick and you need something to stick to it, that's why it's called Slick Stick. And so you base coat everything in slick stick and then paint it whatever color you want. Now this, I slick sticked it with two coats and then I painted two coats of cotton on here. This is a glass vase, just a, you know, flowers came in it. And it has two coats of slick stick on it. I haven't painted it yet because I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it. Um, then let's see this cute little milk bottle and I'm planning on putting a pretty bow around it using the yellow and black ribbon to make a pretty bow around it. Um, I'm not a good bow maker and there's a friend and fellow artist she's a great crafter you guys and her name is summer 
Hammond, and she has a show that's on, I think, almost every day, and her show is uh, called um, Hammond's Nest, and she does beautiful bows. She does a lot of crafting, and she does really fun things, so you guys should check her out, but I want to put a bow around this one, and this one... I used the stamp on it and it didn't come out well, so I repainted it and I'm going to do the stamp again. So that's how you do glass. Does that answer your question? Lois, does that, does that help you out? What kind of glass were you uh, wanting to paint? Oh, hello, sister. Oh yeah, that's my brother's dog. And every now and then you guys have probably um, heard my brother. Sue, you're so surprised how fast the black paint dried. Well, the thing is that chalk paint does dry really fast. And that's one of the things that makes it so fun to work with. Um, if you're using the Dixie Bell silk paint, that's a whole different process, so I have I have videos on how to use it. <clears throat> okay, so Lois, you have a small table with a glass insert. So why can't you just paint the table and set the glass on top? Would that work? You guys, I have another thing I want to show you. I did this box. I showed, I'm going to see if I can flip you guys around so it's not backwards. Hang on, I'm not really good at this kind of stuff. That wasn't it. everybody okay that was the wrong one um, oh maybe it's this well I can't figure it out they've changed how it works but this spells out flowers and it was just plain. It's just a really cool wooden box. I got it on the 70% aisle at Michael's last week. I got a whole bunch of stuff. And, um, and this was just all plain. So I painted it with Voodoo Stain, which is water-based stain, and I did it in Tobacco Road. And then I found a really cool font that I just am in love with this font. And this font is already designed to look like it's all distressed. I didn't do all of this distressing, and I didn't miss like sections of a letter on here. That's just the way the font prints out. So I thought this was super fun and a really fun font. And then I took some Voodoo uh, gel stain in the green and did around the edges and just took it watered down just to age the top of it and across the bottom. And I think it's really cool. So I don't know what I'm going to put in this, but you know, some of those um, milk jugs with flowers in them would be really cute. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna put in it. What, what would you guys put in it? I need some staging advice. So tell me what you guys would put in, but I love, love, love this box. And I wish they'd had more. Um, I wish they'd had more because I would have bought them because this is a nice little box. So Joey, I saw a comment there. Let me go back and see. You have an outdoor table with a glass top. Okay. Yeah, you can always decoupage and then set your glass on top of that too. That would be beautiful. And I've seen that done a lot. And I do a lot of decoupaging. Um, so Lois, you have a painted table, the glass earns insets on a ledge, 
you just wanted to dress up the glass. Yeah, you could use a transfer. You're getting some really good ideas here, su suggestions. Um, I would not paint your glass. That would be my advice, is not to paint your glass, but to do like what the girls are saying. Use a transfer, use decoupage, paint a design on the inside of it. There we go. The milk bottles and flowers, yep. I, that's kind of the direction I'm going with it. I thought it came out really cute. But if you guys can find those in your own Michaels, I mean, those would be really cute for Christmas too. You could really dress them up because they're plain. So you can do anything you want with them. Okay, so I think our time is getting close. Does anybody ha else have any um, questions about anything we've talked about today? If you've uh, enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would give me some hearts and uh, share and sprinkle this around. So that would be awesome. And I will be back tomorrow at four o'clock Mountain Standard Time. And we will be doing a great crafting project. I don't know what it is yet, but it's gonna be great. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. What was that? I can also place dry flowers and they will flatten underneath. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. You guys are full of great ideas. Okay, you guys, that's it. I hope to see you all tomorrow. Have a nice, happy hour. Bye.